So last tribal council, um, I was under the impression that we were probably going to have um, a six one or seven one or six two vote um, for Austin uh, to leave the tribe. Um, much to everyone's awareness and my surprise, <laughs> that was not the case. Um, and we had a three five. Austin, Danny, and Danny has left the Zoom chat. Very shocked is my um, my read on that one. How's it going? It's okay. Oh, tell me more. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. What do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you okay. anything. Cool. Okay. So I, I'm here. So there were rumblings about Danny or Maddie early on. Yeah. Okay. And that was about it. Just rumblings. And I was like, okay, I wasn't thinking about it. I told you I'm not doing it. I wasn't thinking about it. Rumblings from whom? <laughs> well, mostly Austin and Andrew. It started that way. Okay. And then <clears throat> at about seven... 45 maybe was when I was talking with Karen. Okay. Cause that's when I told you I was going in with Karen and that's when she brought it to me that she would prefer Danny. But, and then she said, Austin and Andrew are voting Danny. And I said, well, okay, well that's only, that's still three, only, only three people like, okay. And then she said, Mike, didn't want to be in that group of five that we were in yesterday because I think they were telling him that he was number five. And so it wouldn't make sense for him to be on the outside of the five. And so they said he would vote Danny. And at that point, okay. I, went, I went and talked to them. Yeah. And they all said they were voting Danny. So okay. it was either I vote. I, I could have came and told you guys, yes. You could have came and told me, though, and that's what I'm more curious about. If that's what you're curious about, it's honestly 1 million percent because everyone kept saying you guys were like this. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I just want to know. And, and I know. That that's 100% for, sorry, say, say again. And I know that you told me that you guys like aren't. But it's just one of those things where, like, if everybody keeps saying it, like, I don't want to be stupid looking back on it. Like, it was so obvious. Like, I'm, I feel like an idiot that I just told her. He tells, she tells Danny, it blows up. You know what I mean? My understanding is that Britley voted with me. That's what I believe. Could that be a complete fabrication of the truth? A hundred percent. Um, but. No one has shown me any action that suggests otherwise. And I would imagine if someone voted with me and were also shocked, they may have reached out to me because they would have felt on the outs as well. So that's my logic behind it. I do believe Britley that it was her. Um, yeah. When I think about it and just like the conversations that I've heard, and I don't know if this feels the same on your side because mm -hmm. like in full transparency I had not had a one-on-one -on -one with Danny until oh, yesterday like mm -hmm. that was the first one-on-one -on -one I had and mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if because it was stated so people maybe felt it Lydia stated it at tribal yeah and then Danny wasn't talking to anybody so people thought Danny was just talking to me Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's potentially why it like perpetuated. Yeah. And he seemed like really bothered by it as well. And like, really like, no, 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 no. And yeah. I think it just like all of that comes together to feel like too risky for people yeah. to ignore. And, yeah. and then I would imagine they just, chose not to tell you and me because there was mm -hmm. like a perceived threat of it going right back to him. Right back to Danny. Yeah. 
So have I had any conversations about promising people allegiance and having maybe like FTC plans or number ones? You know, as awful as it sounds, I'm not sure if I have had the actual conversation of saying you are my number one and like proposing to them and like asking that question. Um, but I will say that in my game, I do have an under the radar bracket boys alliance with Mr. Zucker. So before the season started, Zucker was on this bracket that VCC, VCP put on. And uh, <laughs> knowing that we were put together, we kind of joked about that. And that was kind of like our brick in the ice moment. But we also realized like we can actually really benefit each other's games because I can be his shield and he can be, you know, getting the intel, the quiet scene or quiet but not seen kind of person and really balance each other out, you know. But then I also have the popular girls. I have Ashley because both her and I, it's no secret that we're getting pulled in every direction on this chart to have people work with us. And people are putting us as a duo. And so I think what happened was people are putting us as a duo. Well, great. If that's your narrative, we're going to bring it to life, baby. Let's become this duo. And the great thing for her and I is that we're able to not only work with the same people, but also different people and compare notes. So I would say those two are the people that I not only trust the most and kind of see myself getting further within this game, but has the conversation happened of having like this like final two ride or die mentality? I don't think I promised that, but if I did, I mean, I did, I guess. I don't know. Umo tribe getting their first look at the Ignis tribe. Danny voted out. Who's ready for the next uh, tribal immunity challenge? Sure. Awesome. Well, this one is called Double Up. For this challenge, we take inspiration from the last tri uh, tribal immunity challenge in the very first season of Survivor. This challenge will have four stages. The first stage requires two tribe members. The second stage requires four tribe members. The third stage requires six tribe members. And the fourth stage requires all seven tribe members. So this means the first stage participants must compete in all four stages. Before we send you off to strategize and, ass and assign yourselves numbers one through seven, we will give you a clue about each stage. Stage one, blind. Stage two, Holding. Stage three, stick. Stage four, scramble. Welcome back. Now that you guys are numbered one through seven, here's how the four stages will work. In stage one, tribe members one and two will work together to complete a puzzle. One will call and one will solve. The solver will be blindfolded. When the puzzle is complete, the tribe can move to stage two. Stage two. Tribe members one, two, three, and four must hold a plank position for a combined seven minutes. After a combined seven minutes, the tribe can move on to stage three. If the tribe fails to meet this achievement, they will be penalized with a two minute time delay. Stage three, tribe members one, two, three, four, five, and six must move a popsicle stick from their forehead into their mouth using only their face. When, a pop when all popsicle sticks have been transferred, the tribe can move on to stage four. And in stage four, all seven tribe members will compete um, in order from one to seven. Every player will have to unscramble an eight letter word. Uh, player number seven will have to do two words. Uh, your host will confirm if you are correct, then the next person can start unscrambling their word. Once all eight words are unscrambled, the tribe must use the first letters of each of their words to unscramble the secret phrase in order to win tribal immunity. So, sitting out for FUMO, we have Lex and Jeremy. Okay. Survivors ready. Go. So the first stage will be a blind puzzle. Um, small down, uh, little, small left, small left, click, 
big up big up little up all right uh move slightly to the right yeah oh, there a little bit to the right stop click nope left a little a little just slightly well okay just chill with your movements okay <laughs> all right go a little to the right a little more click and hold small left small left small down small up oh no let go let go it said we can click it perfect and a little to the left a left. little to the left. left okay left 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 keep going yeah you're almost there a little to the left a little yep you got it drop it okay. all right now left uh small left it's very small right let go Oh, we see Karen's back. Oh. All right, so we can start our plank. No, well, we're still waiting on Andrew. Andrew. Oh, Ashley and, and, and Ashley's probably back. Are back. Okay. All right, and Andrew's back. back. All right, come on. Let's get our planks going. Here we go. Yeah, All getting right, the plank position. Ready? Oh, good to start. All right, good Ignis start. Tribe, you can start. Ready? You are holding strong. Ignis, you're at a minute each. All, no one has dropped yet. Minute 10 for uh, Puma. Oh. Really oh. down. Oh, yeah. Kylie's down. Ignis is good. They've been Ignis is good. Minutes. Fumo on. is also good. Fumo is good. Moving on to stage right, three. Popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. We got six people on each tribe doing the popsicle sticks. We got six people on each tribe doing the popsicle sticks. Got it. Kylie's got it. One, one. For Ridley and ball. Karen drop. Maddie's got it. Ashley's almost got it. Shay, use your tongue when you get it a little bit past. Ashley's the got it. Got your tongue. Tongue it. <laughs> drops for Mike. Drops for Andrew. Drops for Karen. <laughs> Waiting on the boys for Fumo. You can get yeah. it. They got it. Perfect. Your All right, got Tucker's it. got it. Austin, once you get past your nose, use your tongue. You got it. You got it, guys. Corey, wiggle the face. Like, nice. Simmons, you got it. it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, Austin, you wiggle your face muscles. Don't just. Okay. Uh, nice. Bradley's got it. Bradley. Nice, uh, Mike almost got it. There you go, Corey. Tongue. Karen <laughs> trying to use her tongue. Oh, yes. Small so movements. Karen's got it. Nice, Karen. Small movements. Karen, you're good. Oh, Mike, you got so it. Close. Mike, you look great. Andrew you got and it, Mike. Corey. Austin, Dude, trying to use her face. Oh, oh Corey's got it. just dropped out of Mike's mouth. We're just waiting on Austin. Come on, Mike. You tongue, got tongue, it. Austin. Oh, tongue, Keep tongue. Keep your head back. Don't tilt your head All right, Garcia, you got it. Yeah. Oh. You, you got, got this, Mike. Austin. You got it, Mike. No pressure. We were. Nice. We're Andrew's got it. Right. Andrew, you got it. Oh, you're good. You're Come on, close. Mike. Tongue. Oh, awesome. Tongue. 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 You got it. There you go. Small, small movements. Oh, close, oh, Mike. Sorry. Keep going. Right. Keep going. All right. Cheek. There you Use go. Your tongue. Use your tongue. Get it in. There you go. Oh, oh. Keep your head back. Keep oh. your head back. Oh. Mike's yeah. got it! Yeah. Ignis is yeah. breakout Let's go! Let's go, Karen. Uh, reacting. That is correct. Good job. Andrew, coming to you now. 
No, use your, yeah, just use your cheek muscles. Keep, keep your head just like that. Just use your cheek and use your tongue. Now don't do it. Yeah, there you go. Just let it slide down your cheek. And reach with your tongue. Stick the tongue out. What a dialogue yes. we're having today. Assuring? Yes, correct. Good job. Yeah. Britley, That's correct. you're next. Two words down. You're, you're going to be okay. Thriving. That's correct. Yes, good job. R-A-T. Simmons, you're next. Having trouble getting it past it's the nose. Oh. it falls one more time. Yeah, right there. Tongue. Oh, if you need oh, to mix right. it up, try standing up. There you go. Tongue, you got it. You got this, Simmons. They're still trying to catch that popsicle stick. <laughs> oh, what if he's still going on the popsicle stick? <laughs> you never know on a puzzle, dude. Honestly, yep. like, yep. what eight eight letter scrum scrambles are a bitch. There could be yeah. one person stuck on one word for an hour. It's no also, lie. So maybe tilt your head to the side a little bit. It, uh, if, if it is all stars, it means your word starts with L L L S A. One of those. Simmons. Will this be the time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Obviously. It is not. Reset <laughs> one more time. We believe again. Also, not all of them are going to be Wavering. good. Wavering. Correct. What was it? Wavering. Maddie, Wavering. you're up. Austin gets it to the same Ooh. spot and loses it. Snooping? Correct, good. Mike, you're next. But he's still fighting. Dig yes, you, Austin. Keep going, you got, it. got it. I feel like that's helpful. Swimming. Correct. All right. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> We're now to player seven, Austin, who will All be right, doing Austin, two. All right, Austin, here's your first word. Two L's, Austin. Yep. It must be tough with a beard. Oh, I'm sure. I know. Like less surface area. Well, and it's slick, so like as soon as yeah, it hits, like for it, it to stick. Out, yeah, it's just like water close off it. Yeah. Austin trying again. Got it. Got this. Oh, so close. And it falls. Blanging? No. Okay. Fumo still working on the popsicle there. stick. There you go. You got it. Oh, it's getting so Austin great. is so, oh, so close, close to victory. You got it. Keep wiggling. You're doing great. Don't jerk your head. Just keep it up. Yeah. You keep wiggling your cheek. It'll move around until you can get it in your mouth. If you jerk your head, it'll fly off. So don't do it. And it slips. That's all right. So close. You're so you close that time, dude. So close. You got this, Austin. Let's go, dude. Aligning? That is correct. Yes. We are moving on to the eighth word. Ashley is ready to start on this word puzzle once Austin gets it this time. Exactly. Yep, you got it. It's right there. Come to the that stick down and use your tongue like you got an ice cream cone on the 4th of July. I believe, I believe. Learning? Correct. Learning is correct. All stars. Ignis wins tribal immunity. <laughs> Yes. Let's go. Okay. Ignis wins immunity. We will not be seeing you at Tribal Council. Yes. Fumo, you have a date with Alex and I. See you tomorrow. I had a conversation with Andrew last night that, like, was fascinating. So, number one story he's telling me is like i just said i was voting danny and that's it and then everyone decided to vote danny with me is that like close to it, i i think it depends on who you ask because i was not involved in the beginnings of that process mm -hmm. i was definitely probably the last I, I had to be the last one on board um so i don't know maybe who started it i heard it from he said he was gonna vote danny early on 
Yeah. But I wasn't really like getting a sense that anybody else was also because I didn't really talk to like anybody else about it until really late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't know if it's as simple as he said, like he was voting Danny in that everyone else kind of just followed. He definitely, I don't want to say definitely, but he definitely had a conversation with Karen. I think my really, really, really big decision now is whether or not to like forgive and forget with Simmons would be what I would say if I were to pick the number one consideration I have right now. It, it's that. And it's a tricky, tricky thing to balance. I like very much want to believe him and really connect with him. But I know he knows that. And so it just starts like putting all this paranoia in your mind. Um, but especially if we're going into a situation where things will get shook up lately, I feel like I just need to get one or two more steps. So I feel like working with Simmons is at least a partial way to get there in the short term, at least. I would really love to be one, one hundred percent with him the whole way. I just don't know if it's there for him. My biggest concern right now is that Austin um, doesn't see my vote as an issue. Um, I hope that he understands that uh, those of us who put his name down, uh, other than Danny, me and Madeline we were just kept in the dark about where the vote was going to go. And I'm hoping that the others who voted with him against Danny, um, were, they're able to like relay that info that it's just like, look, you know, we just Maddie and Brilly just were not included in that. And it still bugs me that, Simmons and Mike both, uh, kept, you know, me and Maddie out of the dark, like had, had, you know, Mike just said something or Simmons said something to Maddie, then it could have just been like, okay, well, this is where the tribe wants to go. Um, and that's how it is. I do have one thing that's been on my mind. Um, sure. and like, I'm, I'm going to tell you and you can, like, I still am in the spot where like, I'm going to tell you everything. I know yesterday you may have felt like I burnt the bridge between us, but um, I don't think you burned but, it. It was just kind of like a, you know, like, well, shit, like a heads up would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I just, um, right now, like you didn't burn the bridge. So okay, I'm yeah, yeah. In front. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to tell you this and then, um, you know, like we can decide whether we want to tell Maddie, like you can just like, I trust you. I'm going to tell you first. Okay. You know what I mean? Like we've been, like this since the beginning so like yeah. i'm gonna tell you i'm only gonna tell you this and if we choose to disclose it to maddie then that's something that we okay. can decide mm -hmm. um the number one reason why i did not say anything and i don't know if anyone has told you this yet mm -hmm. um if they haven't it's the same it goes it's the same exact thing as yesterday like you can go ahead and use this against me if you want um and you know my game's over basically or if you mm -hmm. like we can we can use it to our advantage yeah. um the reason i didn't say anything about the vote is because that those those people want an alliance there was a call yeah um it was a it wasn't it wasn't a, like i was being completely honest when i said that when your name came up everybody shot it down when maddie's name came up everybody shot it down mm -hmm. um but i know everybody's saying like yeah like don't talk about the call like there was no call there was a call yeah you know like those people plan on moving forward together. Mm -hmm. um, if there is a swap, like, I feel like, I, I feel like if, if there isn't a swap, then there's moves that we can make. We can get someone yeah. like Karen or, or someone else. That's yeah. why I didn't care about making that move. Yeah. Um, Cause it's not like we're just shit out of luck because I'm not like, I trust you. You know what I yeah. mean? Like people who just throw people into a group and say like, Hey, we're all working together. And it was like the bros club plus Karen. I'm not cool mm -hmm. with that. You know what I mean? Like I know yeah. I wear the backwards hat and I look like a douchebag, but I prefer not to be. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, if there isn't a swap, I feel like we, like you, me, Maddie, we can get out of it. 
um, if there is a swap, I just want you to know that mm -hmm. that was a thing. The first leg was the puzzle blindfolded. I have experience at my job on uh, radios and communicating across radios. So uh, we just use some of the principles that I use at work, which is uh, keep radio communication as simple as possible and as short as possible. Uh, so we just kind of came up with a code of up, down, left, right, and big or small uh, to kind of you know do that. And it was a simple puzzle. It was mostly about the communication and me and Kylie communicated well. So that went well. Um, apparently I don't know what a plank is. So there's that. Okay. Fast forward to me absolutely bombing the challenge. Um, again, everyone's still very supportive, but at the same time, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't help. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Like I can, I can swallow sucking at a challenge. Like if it's individual. But the thought of letting everybody else down, like literally just made me feel like a bag of shit. And it sucks. And then it like made it worse because then I felt like I was being kind of quiet and like bummed out. And then we were all sitting in a Zoom call after the fact. And then I'm like, well, this isn't great for my game either to be sitting here all bummed out either. So it's just, it was a tough situation. Like, I've never performed that badly at a challenge before. So it was kind of a new experience for me, at least specifically like in a tribe challenge. Um, so to let my tribe down was like really hard for me. So, you know, we had kind of like a tribe debriefing after just to uh, just, just, you know, try and keep as much morale up as possible. But, you know, all the while knowing that tomorrow is going to be more of a scramble than we're used to. And, um, yeah, so so it's not going to be a fun day tomorrow, but what uh, was important was to get the uh, core five back together just to, you know, have have a talk before, you know, the end of the night, just um, having some kind of plan in action. So that way, when tomorrow comes, you know, we can talk to other people and just make sure that the target is not one of us. And so as things stand right now, um, I think what our main target is probably just the consensus is Jeremy, just a little more of a, we're not sure if he has something, if he has a, an advantage or an idol. So, but we don't want to necessarily put all our votes on him. So we might consider a split vote of some kind, um, you know, maybe between him and Garso. I think those are the two names where we're kind of, uh, you know, between, but preferably, at least also from my perspective, preferably Jeremy. So, you know, we'll have more talks about that just to shore up those plans in the, you know, time before tribal. Um, but yeah, that's how things stand now. And I'm just trying to do what I can to just make it through this vote. So I just talked to Jeremy <clears throat> right after we got off the tribal Zoom. And... I told him, I said, if we can get them to, to, uh, if we can get them to split their votes, because whoever has the idol isn't going to want to reveal it to the others, unless it's a community idol, which in that case, there's nothing we can do. But if they're keeping it to themselves, they'll want to go along with a split vote. So I told Jeremy, I said, I can do two things. One, I can, let Shay, you know, say something to Shay tomorrow. Like, I'm really feeling like something is amiss. To let him know that I feel like I'm in trouble. He could let the others know. And if they were like, well, what if Corey has the idol? That would be the, the whole point, is to plant that seed of, I feel like I'm in danger. So that they would have reason to want to split votes on me and someone else. Then I said to Jeremy, the other thing I can do is we'll have Kylie and you and me. That's three out of nine. If they're going to split their votes, I could talk to Garsaw and say, you can either be a number for Lex or you can come on board with us right now. We can take out whoever we want to take out. Whoever we want. In fact, I'll let Garsaw make the decision if that's what he wants to do. He could become the most powerful person in this round 
for our tribe by deciding who he wants out if he comes on board with us. And the four of us become the majority in a split boat situation and we could take out whoever we want. Um, well, the unnamed oh, five uh, got together um, and that's myself, uh, Lex, Sarah, Ashley, Zucker um, before the challenge and had kind of put in a word of like, okay, well, if it, we'd go directly to a tribal, um, you know, we'd probably, probably look to uh, put votes on Jeremy. And it was a group consensus um, with Sarah um, putting out there that maybe Corey would be a good option too. They they wanted to do Jeremy. Like everyone else wanted to vote Jeremy and then split on Austin. And I was like, I really don't want to vote either of those two guys out. Um, I mostly like for Jeremy, I like Jeremy. I've had some really good conversations with him and I feel like he kind of got like a raw deal early on in the tribe. And I feel like, uh, I feel like I, I want him to stay longer. Like, I think he deserves to stay longer. I don't think he deserves to just be like, uh, a big, not universal vote out, but I just, I don't know. It just felt like kind of like nobody even was really trying to talk to him. And I was like, I feel like that guy, I feel like he seems like he would work with people. So I didn't like that pick. I also don't like Austin because I feel like so many people have been telling him that we're not going to just vote you out because you did bad at the challenge. We're not going to just vote you out because you're new. And it would feel like really mean spirited to vote him out after everyone told him that. And I just like, don't really vibe with that kind of meanness, which maybe that's like not an all-star move, but I can't help that. Um, <laughs> it's not really just like, it's just not in my nature to try to be like that. Um, so I believe them when they say they don't want to vote for Austin. Um, and uh, that has definitely shifted. Um, we had a nice little chat overnight, but you know, those West Coasters stay up. And in the morning, um, we come to learn a few juicy bits of info. I wake up to chaos because Corey has spoken Lex's name and it's like speaking Beetlejuice you've said it three fucking times and now here he is and now Lex has had conversations with everybody because that is what Lex does Lex talks to everyone and Lex is in good standing with everyone and everyone thinks they're in good standing with Lex and so Austin has taken the information Corey has given him and run it back to Lex. All right. So Austin apparently has some tea. So I'm excited to hear this tea. All right. Let's hear it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, right after the group tribe call, uh, I was on a call with Corey and he's like trying to pitch this whole like minority group thing. Right. Okay. Um, Cause you know, I'm, rightfully trying to say you know I don't feel comfortable I feel like I'm on the bottom blah 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 blah. Uh, so he thinks he can get himself me and Jeremy together and one other person but he doesn't have a name for the fourth and then isn't giving me a name of who he would necessarily go after but overall he's like had made other comments about how like pegging you two as a duo because you're both very social <laughs> and um he was also saying that on your first vote uh he was specifically told to reassure lex that he wasn't working with jeremy and um and austin m so austin could take the easy route and reveal everything i said to others and get me voted out like I said, it's the easy route, and it might even be the smart route, but it could also be smart if we can get four people to come together if there's a split vote and take out someone we want to take out. You know, normally that's a good move to entertain, you know, um, but I think the situation that we're in, we still have nine people on our tribe, and we could be going into a swap pretty soon, so the more unanimous of a vote we can do and the more united we stay i think the better because then going into the swap we're not i mean no matter who we swap with we feel like we can trust those people and continue to work with them and that they're not going to flip out of swap and jeremy separately has taken the information and given it to lex and Corey reminds me i can do another zoom meeting and 
he's still worried that it's going to be either him or myself. And so he wants to get him, myself, Kylie, and possibly Garso to get a four person alliance together. Because in my mind, it's no secret that I think people are going to put Ash and I together as being those social people in the group because. <laughs> okay, so I'm right about that read. I think people, I was talking to Ashley tonight. She was asking me, like, do you think people are putting us together? And I'm like, I mean, potentially, because we are somebody who is, you know, is social, you know, but you just made that face. Like, what does that mean? Are people doing that? Yeah. Who told you that? I mean, Uh-oh. so. <laughs> oh, God. So I also have to be honest, like, Go for it. I, I still keep like in contact with Corey because he is kind of like giving me information. And sure. so I'm like. I want to funnel it to you guys. Totally. Um, so yeah, he is saying that he was like, yeah, like I just feel like Shay and Sarah are together. And like, I don't know why like you and Austin just kind of got like pinned together when there's like a bunch of people who are like kind of duos on this tribe. And I'm like, he started that shit. Are you kidding me? I don't know. The whole mess is just. And so is he saying to you, is Corey telling you that it's me and Ashley? And then he also like, well, Austin and Zucker, like he threw like a bunch of people's names. So now Lex has this information from two different sources that did not come together. And so he knows it to be factual. So he goes into a conversation with Corey. So, of course, after talking to Austin Gerso and talking to Jeremy, I went to Corey and talked to him. And of course, I was just, Corey, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm just, I'm so panicked. I feel like I'm on the minority because, of course, I'm this social butterfly, but no one's giving me a name. Whatever do I do, Corey? And he tells me, oh, let's go with the majority. There's no need to make waves. We're going to swap soon. Just, it's okay. It's okay. Cool. Just stay cool, calm, and collected, Lex. We got this. Really? That's your cover? I've used that same shit in other games. I see right through your ass. And he's acting like the most paranoid player ever when he's really the most comfortable player on this tribe. And he's acting like the most paranoid player. And now he's talking to me about wanting to pull in Jeremy and Austin for a four-person alliance to get them to the, the other people in the tribe to split votes and the four of us would become a majority. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This guy thinks he's fooling me. He's, he is smart cookie. He's trying to see how I would respond to this. Trying to get ammunition on me not gonna fly but Corey's like Kylie like in that conversation like he kept mentioning you like I think he's on to you I'm like well he wouldn't fucking be on to me if you hadn't done all this other extra shit and so I am literally I, it's like four o'clock in the morning four oh fucking eight and I'm like are you kidding me I have got to go back to sleep for a few hours what am I going to do so I go back to sleep I'm like I'm going to be calm and I'm going to handle this when I wake up And I get a message from Lex of, hey, I want to have a conversation with you in the morning. Corey is labeling myself and Ashley as a duo. Okay. As well as Shay. He's labeling Shay and Sarah as a duo. Okay. And he wants, and he said that Shay reached out to him about making a consensus group. And this is Shay to Corey. Uh-huh. Corey to Austin, Austin to me. Okay. The telephone game. <laughs> okay. Shay to Corey, um, Corey to Austin, Austin to you. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And Corey also is mentioning that he wants to bring in Jeremy mm-hmm. and he wants to have this minority majority. Okay. So Shay, Corey, so Jeremy, Shay, him, and Austin. And then bringing in, and Austin told me, bringing in two other people to have a majority to take someone out of you ashley of shay or sarah or of just the seven okay. he didn't specify to austin who, okay but he asked austin to be on board with that and mm-hmm. austin said well right now i don't have any right. new the tribe i'm not really sure blah blah and then austin's like i'm telling lex immediately because obviously our attorney falls connection so i was yeah. like you know what like thank you austin 
you have my allegiance, my friend. Like, thank yeah. you. You know? So that was really big to know. Yeah. And then he's shit. like, should we tell Ashley? What's that? I said, holy shit. Yeah. But then he was like, should we? T-? So and then Austin said, I want to tell Ashley. And I was like, honey, let's invite her on the call. So then we had a three-way call just now. Well, not just now, but sorry, last night yeah. about what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then he tells her everything. And Ashley was like, oh, no. And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> like, this is a problem, <laughs> you know? And so when I talked to you last night, it was like, uh, Kylie, we need a chat. Because I want to tell you what was going on behind closed doors with me, Austin, and Ashley. Yeah. And how you found out later on, you know? Wow. So that's the only reason why I wanted to tell you first. But yeah. So like I literally dressed in all black today. I was like, I am going to invoke Dan Giesling. Like this is going to be Kylie's funeral. And I am just like going to have to like, I don't know. Like I played through all of these different scenarios because I do feel like I have a friendship with Corey that I don't want to ruin in real life. But our games together cannot go forward. We are on separate paths from this point forward, but I cannot tell Corey that either. And so I'm like, I'm going to have this conversation with Lex. I'm going to see what he says to me. And depending on what stuff he presents, I may have to be honest with him and like, okay, these are some of the, like, I really trust you, Lex. I really, you know, we connect well. Um, but these are the reasons why I may have gotten a little spooked by you and just lay it out there. But when I have, and I, so I am coming in ready to do this and doing whatever damage control I have to do. So when I have my initial conversation with Lex this morning, he doesn't come at me at all. Like he is keeping this, he like, oh, Kylie, you're not going to believe this craziness that Corey is doing. And, you know, like he is not, he is not implicating me in this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe Corey is doing all of this. This is brand new information to me. Um, You know, like, how should I go forward talking to Corey? So I talked to Corey and this is the first time where I am not giving Corey all of the information. And by the same token, not being completely truthful with him because at this point in time, like it's a sinking ship. We're like literally that little boat hanging off of the waterfall and like me and Corey are sitting in the front and I'm just gonna hop off the boat and let him go off the waterfall by himself. And so I'm not giving Corey factual information. So I talked to Lex and I was like expecting like, to get called out and he just was like hey girl like just wanted to chat since we talked yesterday and like <clears throat> everything we talked about was like everything's just normal like the vote split is still seven two or whatever we just not seven two four three yeah like four three whatever we decide to do he he was thinking that he was trying to pitch it where he's like Corey, you and i can make a big move right now Mm-hmm. He's like, if there were, if the yeah, no, he didn't, group is he gonna... didn't tell me anything. And that's what I tell Corey. And it feels so shitty, like on a real human level to lie to a friend. And I'm so worried that I'm going to fuck up a real life friendship. But I am in this position of where my Monte Carlo game, you know, where it was fun to, you know, like try to keep Mike in the game, also tanked my game to do that. And if I were to be truthful with Corey on everything, I would be doing the exact same thing again. And then let me think. So now I feel like people are talking about splitting it on Jeremy and Corey, which I think is a little bit better because Corey hasn't really talked game with me that much. True and false. Okay, so what's true going to be? True will be... True will be that I, Shay, will be voting for Jeremy. And false so would if be... If it comes I'm up true... Voting Jeremy. Got yep. it. Yep, if it comes up true, I'm going to do it. If it comes up false, you can do it. And I'll just put it down here. Yeah. All right, you ready? Goes. How it goes. I can't see. 
Oh. False. So you get the honors. All right. Cool. Yeah, Fumo. It's been a it's been a minute since you guys were all here at Tribal Council. So let's get right down to it. Ashley, what factored into decisions for who went where in the challenge? Obviously, things didn't go as planned uh, because you guys are sitting here. So how did you all come? And then also, how did you come together post challenge loss? Sure. So I mean, we made our decisions uh, the last round, just like we did in rounds prior, which is we all contributed what we thought our strengths would be and where we might do well. And we listened and collabor collaboratively, you know, tried to pick what we thought would be best. Uh, the difference I think this time is that we had a lot less information in terms of what the specific challenges would be. And therefore our um, analysis of who might be the best fit um, didn't wasn't accurate and that's why we're here. Um, we all met up last night and honestly, I think it was, you know, we're, we're a close group and we wanted to support everyone. And it was a tough challenge for uh, Garso. And I think a lot of it was us wanting to make it clear to him that we were going to decide how to move forward tonight at Tribal Council, not based on the, purely on the performance uh, in the challenge, but that we were gonna take into account a big variety of factors and that he wasn't just you know out like he still had a chance uh, and so that's what we talked about and with that challenge jeremy uh you, you and lex both ended up having to sit out this challenge did either of you really think results could have been different if you guys were involved like is there any regrets there or do you think this was just the path that was always going to happen i mean people can always second guess if they would be good at a challenge, but we had very little information to go off of for this challenge. And I'm looking at you, all your little production members. Um, and so it's really hard to tell. I mean, I know for me personally, like what was hard for me was like, I could not give out any words of encouragement to anyone. I just had to have my screen off and the mic, mic off. And to me, that was the hardest part. Um, and I definitely reached out uh, to Garso after the challenge, let him know like, he did great in that challenge to be able to just keep going and not give up for the entirety of the time. That is what I love the most because it, it takes a lot of courage just to not give up. So that's where I was with the challenge. Not very admirable there. Um, so moving over now to Kylie. Uh, in your last season, uh, you had to face a lot of twists in the games. You were swapping consistently. There's always something going on. How has it been this time around experience, um, experiencing not swapping and you sticking with an original tribe for multiple rounds now? So, I mean, I feel like I'm definitely influenced by my season because I'm like, this is all stars. Like we only have 10 days. They're gonna do something every, every night. And so, Literally every day I've come in prepared like that we're going to have an immediate tribal council. We're going to have a swap. And so like I keep getting bamboozled <laughs> because nothing happens, which is great because like I think we've gotten really close as a group and it sucks to be here because of that. And so, I mean, yeah, like I'm but I still every night anticipate something happening because y'all are evil. Yeah, you know, uh, perspective always on what is truly evil. But going along with that uh, thread, Lex, there's always speculation of twists and advantages in any game of Survivor. Do you believe that anything is out there right now or if anything's been found? I definitely know that something is out there, if not multiple. Um, to recap in my head, you know, I mean, it's no secret that we've all seen the bold letters on the tree mail. Um, like, and then, you know, like, it's just the rules are also numbered differently. So it's just like, there's lots of random shit going on and how it all comes together to make the, make the puzzle complete. That's my issue. <laughs> so I know it's out there. I just don't know how to put the puzzle together. Well, if there are puzzles out there, I hope 
you guys do some more practice. Well, getting more into discussing where we are now. So Garso, you were voted out uh, in the first round of the non-limb by the Ignis tribe. You've now had a few rounds to acclimate into the Fumo tribe. How do you feel uh, these past few days getting to be uh, acquainted with these new people, new, new faces, some old faces, and how you ultimately think you are positioned in this group of people? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting situation to be in, right? Because um, you do your best to try to form bonds with your original tribe and then um, get voted out when you didn't think that that's what was going to happen. And then like, you end up like kind of in a low and then you realize, oh, I'm back in the game. And then now there's this whole other task in front of you, which is getting to know everybody else on the new tribe um, and feeling like you're starting over from square one. Luckily, I was only a day behind and I feel like so far, um, I've really gotten to know these people really well and everyone has been just over the moon and just great to talk to. Um, everyone's been really welcoming and I feel like um, I've been a part of this tribe from the beginning, so. So Sarah, how do you believe past relationships and past game history factor into game decisions today? Um, I feel like coming into it, I thought it would be like a very important thing. Like I thought that would be like, it would be impossible to like work with people. Like I thought it was going to be like the end all be all of everything for all the seasons. But I have found that is like the opposite of it. Like, um, one, I don't know the relationships of the past seasons. I haven't watched them all. Sorry, guys. Like McKenna, sorry. I'm sure they're wonderful. Um, so for me personally, it's not as big of a deal. Like, uh, like, like the person I knew the most was Lydia on the other side, and I voted for her four times in her season. So I don't know like what that working relationship really would have done for me anyways. Um, so I'm trying not to think of that. I'm trying to think of every single person as like, this is the first time we're playing together and it's like all opportunities. So Corey, uh, because the first vote that your tribe had as a group wasn't truly a real elimination, this is the first time that at the end of this, someone is getting voted out. So with that, is there any paranoia now that everyone's here, it's happening within minutes, someone's getting their torch snuffed? It's, it's one of these interesting games that it's always like, in a game where you can't trust anyone, you have to trust someone or some people. So it's like, there's always in the back of your head that you could be the one going home at any time. So would I say that it's paranoia? Not necessarily, because that's maybe the way that it can dictate your gameplay. Um, but it is just the readiness to have your torch snuffed at any tribal council you have to show up to and that you don't have the individual immunity necklace around your back. Uh, Shay, for every round, someone gets voted out of the game. But every I mean, not the first one. Well, in a typical round, someone gets voted out of the game. But every decision, even in a non-elimination, has short and long-term ramifications. So how do you factor these unknown variables into making the best decision for your game as an individual and as a tribe? Oh, man. <laughs> you may be asking the wrong guy. Um, this is the one who is like, ah, I don't feel like going for that challenge and guessed all-star Smash Mouth for the, for the shit the thing put out there, right? Um, I mean, honestly, like, it, to me, sometimes you can get into your own head. Um, these sort of things can be stressful. And, you know, while it can be intense, it's still a game. Um, so you kind of got to right size it for yourself, I think, of how much you really want to take in a thousand different factors. Or, um, you know, if you're like me today who had a migraine, you just keep it simple. Um, and sometimes I think it's just best just to keep it simple. And that's kind of where I'm at, at least for today. Okay. Well, let's see if that pays off. Uh, Zucker, when people go to vote tonight, what should everyone on this tribe be thinking as they go to cast their vote? Um, well, I think for the most part, we all were under the assumption 
going into the immunity challenge last night that there was going to be a swap. We were all wrong. Um, so that's my mentality that we can't assume there's going to be a swap. That might be the ultimate twist of the season. We're anticipating all these twists and turns, and maybe the biggest one is that there just won't be. I mean, so, you know what I, happens when you assume. I, well, I, yeah, I kind of incriminated myself there, but <laughs> going beyond that, um, I think the name of the game is going into today's challenge as strong of a unit as we can. So my basis for my decision is going to be trying to set the tribe up for winning again so that way we don't have to find ourselves back here. We can gain even more of a numbers advantage on the other tribe. So if and when there is a swap, we have that much more going for us. So that that's how I'm viewing tonight's vote. Does anyone else have anything left to say before we get to the vote? Okay. It's time to vote. So the person I'm voting for tonight, it's very simple. You say my name in your mouth. Just you need to remember that Karma's a bitch and her name is Lex. Enjoy going home tonight, Corey. It's been a great time. Um, so the name I'm writing down tonight is Jeremy, um, but I know it's not going to be Jeremy going tonight. Um, the vote, as far as I know, is gonna be Corey. Uh, but this is just uh, an insurance move, just in case, uh, you know, Corey were to have found some type of advantage or idol and played it. Uh, this was the next, um, the, ne the person next on the list that, uh, you know, we, we were most unsure with as, as my group uh, came to, you know, um, came, came to terms with, so. All right, Corey, if this works, I know you spent a lot of time making sure that I was not the target today, but I was working twice as hard to make sure you were. I cannot let you get any further in this game and possibly try to reconnect with Karen. And this is low-key revenge for Ian and Morgan three years ago. I'll go tally the votes. If anybody has an advantage or a hidden immunity idol and wants to play it, now will be the time to do so. Once the votes are read, the, de the decision is final. The person voted out will be asked to leave the Zoom call immediately. I'll read the votes. First vote, Jeremy. Jeremy. Corey. We're tied. Two votes Jeremy, two votes Corey. 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 The third person voted out of DCP All-Stars, Corey. Corey, the tribe has spoken. Great job, everybody. Um, go on and kick the other tribe's ass and you know, really love getting to know every one of you. And um, yeah, I'll see you all on the other side. So with that, uh, Fumo, you officially lost the first member of your tribe. And I'll tell you right now, it won't get any easier. So best of luck in the next challenge. That was a lot Good of night, fun. Everyone. There was a lot of a lot of gameplay involved in just a few short days. Um, you know, these people are very good at what they do. And so, you know, I decided to play high risk, high reward this time. And sometimes whenever you play high risk, you get burned. And that's what happened. I find it fascinating because coming in and I saw Jeremy on my tribe, I thought he would be a hindrance to my game. And as time went on, I realized I really, really, really wanted to work with him. And so it broke my heart to have to write his name down to me. 
but I'm happy he's still in the game. So, you know, I was thinking to myself, if I move forward without him in it, it's like, you know what, Jeremy, I'm going to find out what's up with Kylie. And I'm going, you know, because I had my suspicions. So I was thinking, I'm going to kind of play for you a little bit, dude. Like, she's the reason why I, we couldn't put this thing together. And so, yeah, it, it really hurt Dr. Lady's name down. But I'm happy he's still in.